Without further delay, let me just uh, get started with this debate. Um, uh, Carmen, could you tell us a bit about uh, what is the work of SFP in the world with the octopus fisheries? And also, could you tell us about the, the issues, the difficulties, the pitfalls that you find, that you encounter in your work? Well, first of all, let me just thank you for inviting me for being here today to be here today. For those of us who don't know us, SFP is an environmentalist NGO. We don't work um, towards the social, the civil society. You, you're not going to see our logo very often, but we do work with the companies that are in the uh, supply chain. And in this regard, in our strategy, uh, we give priority to a number of uh, sectors. One of them is octopus, the demand of octopus at the international level, at, uh, as uh, we have heard already, has increased. So in the markets where we work, where we have an influence, there is a demand. Um, then octopus fisheries are basically artisanal, small-scale fisheries, so we uh, tackle the challenges of these uh, octopus, which, uh, these fisheries, which is an important thing to do for us. Within the framework of these, sectors what we organize is supply chain roundtables and these roundtables are um, some such as the global octopus roundtable with companies that import and buy octopus and others that distribute octopus in Europe and the US. I see some familiar faces of companies such as Di Estefa, Margalicia from Casal, Angula Zainagas and also uh, U.S. companies that uh, are not here today at Conchamar. But it's important to say that we are a working group, a forum, a forum to identify fisheries that need to be improved and to promote uh, improvement projects that can lead to uh, an MSc certification or to uh, uh, better practice in fisheries. This is the goal, to improve the world picture. Um, we talk about octopus. We have uh, small octopus, big octopus, a number of different geographical areas. We focus basically on uh, fisheries. Uh, we start with a common uh, octopus, of octopus vulgaris uh, fisheries in the northeast of Africa, uh, northwest of uh, Northwest of Africa and Mexico, since the markets where these companies actually started asking for uh, our help, uh, are the these are the main interests of these institutions. And nowadays, we have increased the scope of the group, and we are working with uh, Blue uh, Octopus, Octopus Sierra in uh, the Philippines and Indonesia. This in enables us to cover 60% of the volume, approximately. In terms of the challenges, pitfalls or in, in management and implementation of improvements, well, I think that Ruben has given us a, a number of hints, basically, to we need to take into account that octopus is not like tuna, where traditionally there's been a lot of uh, administ uh, authorities, management uh, institutions, and stakeholders, and except for Morocco and Mauritania, which have more tradition, there are um, fishing institutes that assess these stocks and that have um, management measures. We normally have um, fisheries that have little data, and this makes it difficult to conduct a proper management. So the pitfall, the challenge is to improve that. Also in terms of artisanal fisheries, octopus fisheries are fisheries that are developed uh, basically in um, that are developed in small in, uh, small scale fisheries with a lot of boats and a lot of dispersion dissemination so it's difficult to uh, go back to that part in terms of managing data in terms of uh, doing that um, uh, so we need to resort to such such as co-management which is very important and we need to consider also the implications socio-economic implications of 
of these fisheries. There is a huge volume in terms of fishermen with a lot of dissemination scattered around, we can say, and um, very communities that are very dependent on fisheries. And these are the main challenges that we're facing when it comes to implementing improvements. So uh, our goal is to implement these type of measures, uh, FIPs, um, fishery improvement project with uh, stakeholders who are involved and that help us to uh, connect and contact the um, providers and so that we can improve these improvements, so that we can promote these improvements. Okay, thank you very much, Carmen. You have brought to the table very interesting issues. I would like to go back to ask you about, uh, uh, well, you have talked about uh, problems regarding the lack of science data. You have talked about the dissemination of um, uh, boats. I would like you to tell us a little bit about uh, the problems that you face regarding uh, cooperation with uh, regional authorities and also as an NGO. When do you feel frustrated in terms of things not making progress? But I would like to also give the opportunity to uh, the representatives of the administration to tell us a, a little bit about uh, uh, Francisco, about uh, how have you experienced the process in the last five years? How, because you have had to work and uh, manage all of this and successes. What's the role? What's been the role of all of the of the administration of the authorities in, in this process? Good afternoon to all of you. It's very nice to hear you talk so well about Asturias in this um, very important um, fishery, the octopus fishery in west of uh, in western Asturias. The management of octopus started in 2000, in the year 2000, with the initiative of our um, Center for um, Fishery Science. And we have to be very proud of them because they are conducting a very important work. And, uh, well, I am speechless uh, when it comes to describing the work that they do. In 2000, these uh, exploitation plans were uh, ma uh, created, and these were the starting point for, in 2016, the anxiety of uh, fishermen, because uh, this was started by fishermen, became a reality, or turned into a reality. I mean, uh, this anxiety was replaced by a reality. So all this work uh, had a fruit. It was a fruitful work. And in 2016, after pre-evaluation of uh, uh, MSC, this uh, fishery was certified. It was the uh, first in the world. Now, there are two uh, in the world. So this accreditation uh, showed a number of this certification showed a number of uh, strengths, but a number of weaknesses also. Maybe the main strength is the one that has been mentioned by Ruben, the one about knowing what is the volume of catches that could be extracted uh, so that the uh, resource can be sustainable. Um, this certification generated also a synergy between scientists, fishermen, and the authorities that became involved from the beginning in the process to make progresses in terms of knowledge. Now we have mathematical models that were developed together with Ruben, and we have advanced towards a more sustainable man management model. But this was the main pitfall. And apart from all the difficulties that uh, an authority might have for the management in terms of managing any fisheries, I'm talking about uh, contracts, I'm talking about, uh, um, well, anything. Uh, that we um, try to do uh, from the authority in this sense is uh, complex. Well, uh, Francisco is very humble, I have to say, and some things that we have seen they were doing, such as mobilizing funds for to promote new uh, science and also uh, fisheries laws to find solutions for the improvement conditions. We have always talked very well about uh, Asturias fisheries, both in public and in private, and we're very proud and very happy to see everything that you are doing, Francisco. Uh, 
Here today with us is Mauricio, representative of the fleet also. We have focused on the um, fisheries of Asturias and Australia. Both of them are certified, but as Carlos said in his presentation, there are many other fisheries that are involved in a improvement process that we've been working a lot. So Mauricio, could you tell us a little bit about uh, why did you start a um, fisheries improvement project in Yucatan? How are you experiencing, experiencing these? What are the challenges for you going forward? And what are the main goals of this uh, fishery improvement uh, project? Thank you very much, first of all, for inviting me to be here today. The added value of uh, traveling and these times also is interesting. I was invited in 2014, 2015 by a Brazilian company with a very relevant US market and their provider in Europe. Yucatan, the peninsula of Yucatan, Mexico, to be a part of the start of the assessment of the pulpo uh, fishery in Yucatan. Uh, then we formed a group and we started working on this FIP thing. In 2018, we got more people, but we were still stuck in the FIP part of the process. And today, we have decided to give some more strength and robustness to what we are organizing with a view to uh, in attracting more people and having a greater impact on the fishery, uh, especially on the people who make it possible. The uh, octopus fishery in Mexico, the one in Yucatan in particular, is the one who is sustaining the uh, fishery sector of this area in the peninsula of Yucatan. Uh, so around this fishery produces around 22,000 tons per year, depending on the number of circumstances, as you know. Limited circumstances, as you know, in this industry. But this is a, va a, a, a value that has been generate at added value that is generating lots of this is generating lots of added value for families in live from fisheries in the area so this creates jobs and it's one of the main job creators in the peninsula of Yucatan. This is why, since I started my company 10 years ago, almost, I decided to focus on sustainability as an added value. But the FIP has some limitations from my very particular point of view, very, my very personal point of view. So we made the decision to focus on the next step, to find a certification that gave robustness to the uh, mm, fishery compared to the FIP. So we started a dialogue with MSC the MSC, and we started a partnership to see what we can do going forward and uh, uh, to have a greater acceptance and have an added value regarding the market to offer those who produce, uh, who produce octopus. So we, we, we are, what we are doing at the moment is to try and get the ECO label by MSE to have it as a uh, proof of the values being added by the octopus fisheries in Yucatan. The uh, challenges that we see going forward are many. We have the tangible part of challenges. It's what we get from the assessments regarding the bait that is being used the um, part of the inspection and surveillance of the fishery is a very important issue. And uh, there's another one. And the intangible part is the uh, value that uh, is going to be generated with a view to uh, giving more robustness to this and to attract more partners. And then we have a second uh, challenge around the FIP. Uh, in spite of the fact that nowadays we have some people who are supporting us and we have been a part of the um, roundtable of the FIP of Mexico, we have uh, two or three uh, important players who are producers, but they are not representing the critical mass uh, 
um, involved in fisheries, in that fishery. So what we are trying to get is to generate value for the product to have more acceptance, more market, a greater market, and to become one of the on the, the few certified fisheries in Mexico and in the world uh, as for uh, uh, October. So we see this as a great value for Mexico. Thank you very much, Mauricio, for this uh, intervention. Um, you say that more players are needed in the FAP to give it more strength, more commercial players, companies. So this is something that is in connection with what Graciete is going to tell us about. Today we have extraordinary translators, so you can speak in Portuguese and Spanish or in Portugal, whatever you like, no problem. So, um, Graciete, I would like to know from the point of view of a company, what are the priorities at the uh, sustainability level that Brasma is uh, handling and what is the uh, place of the improvement of fisheries and uh, fi of octopus fisheries regarding this project as well. Thank you very much and thank you very much for inviting Brasma to be here today at Conchema and to talk about an issue that is very important for us. What happens regarding uh, the issue of uh, uh, the MSC at the uh, global level? We feel that the market is increasing uh, greatly, not only for octopus, but in general, the number of species that are being uh, uh, that the market is asking for is greater and greater every day. And there is no exception for octopus. So we are having uh, clients that are asking for products, MSC product, on a global level. So this is why we are here today as a stakeholder, uh, because we are very interested in uh, guaranteeing a united chain and want to uh, be partners in, in trying to uh, uh, shorten the distances between the fisheries and the chain. Uh, so we think that this is a present, a pressing priority, and we are here just to try and give some impetus to these process and to make sure that we are making progress in this regard. Thank you, Graciete. Now I am going to. Uh, try and focus on some interesting issues that we are bringing to the table. Mauricio was talking about the need to attract more commercial players. You, Graciete, are, seeing that, uh, are saying that you are open as a company to cooperate. I would like to go back to, ask, uh, to, to Carmen to ask her, what challenge do you consider one of the main pillars that you work on? How to uh, link the companies to the fisheries? What are the pitfalls and challenges that you look at? And in particular, how can we connect companies to the fishery to improve the sustainability of this fishery in Mexico or any other country? Uh, well, I invite you to join our platform. Uh, the launching of the FIP in Yucatan was made thanks to the company that Mauricio uh, mentioned, which is Neptuno. So we started this FIP because Neptuno thought it was necessary to become involved in an improvement initiative. Now they have taken that step and they've decided to uh, become involved and take a step further in terms of the certification. But the FIP was already designed with a view to uh, tackling the MSC certification. The program has been uh, tackling uh, uh, an MSC assessment uh, test has been conducted, so the process has been started. So the different links of the chain have a, pl a role to play. We have the challenges of uh, big retailers uh, with uh, more and more uh, buy-in policy, uh, demanding buy-in policies, but in other cases uh, this is different. So I think that they are playing a very important role. they into the companies who can act as a middleman because on the one hand they have to respond to the demands of the big retailers, the great retailers, the large retailers, uh, particularly companies that are exporting to the US where there is a, a growing octopus demand so uh, they don't really understand that there is not a uh, MSC certified raw product uh, so it's going to be difficult that uh, in the short term we have more certified fishes. So what these companies do, they help out some of the ones I have mentioned by 
connecting us to the origin who has to become involved in this project. Uh, the players that Mauricio has mentioned, apart from the uh, middlemen, are the companies that are in at the origin of the process, um, because they are the ones who have a greater political power in the countries, and they can actually uh, connect. And this is what's happening in Mauritania at the moment. In this pro project that Carlos has mentioned already, there is a, uh, how to put it, two parallel uh, uh, things that are being done, the scientific one, and then the Mauritanian companies themselves have decided to uh, get together to mobilize these changes at the national level. So I think that this is, uh, uh, to an extent, the way that companies can become involved in. Uh, you have a, a, a play, a role to play, but it's very important that companies that are in the middle of the uh, chain, importing, exporting, uh, selling, redistributing, become connected to the origins and become involved in this and with these initiatives. Often we think that improvement projects and certifications uh, improve uh, fisheries and this is what they have been designed for, but I would like to dig a little bit deeper and ask you, Francisco, about uh, a vision. How did you think the MSC uh, 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 certification in fisheries has improved the life of uh, fishermen. We have talked about this before, but I would like you to tell me uh, how this certification has actually improved the life of the authorities also, because I think that there is uh, something that needs to be highlighted in that regard also. Well, let's start with the workers. I think that the working methods have been improved, in particular in these fisheries, and this involves uh, also uh, a smaller impact regarding the um, resource if we just to use a, 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 a number of X uh, baskets. Now they use less baskets, so the uh, fisherman is happy about this because they work less and they have more profitability, more yield, and this is very important. Another very important part of the process is to reduce the uncertainty in terms of um, sale, first sale prices. The certification added certainty to these prices. Uh, the fisherman knows what the price is going to be once they catch their octopus. And this doesn't happen in many uh, fisheries. So I think that this is uh, something that we need to highlight. In terms of the improvement for the authorities, as I have already said, it has generated synergies that we didn't have earlier, uh, sort of uh, cooperation and partnership between a number of entities, the University of Vieda, the Science Institutes. With Dr. Jose Luis Acuña, as Ruben said, so there's a number of synergies and a huge involvement of the sector, which is very important. So it has improved uh, the quality in terms of uh, working conditions, and I always uh, connect this to the problem of the generational replacement. If we improve the quality of the fisheries activities, it is moreover uh, our obligation as authorities to improve the quality of work in working conditions in fisheries. And all of the aspects are connected to the generational replacement. To make the fisheries sector attractive, again, is one of the uh, most important objectives that we have set for ourselves as administrators. One of the things that we have seen as uh, uh, throughout the years is that there's been an evolution in terms of the mentality of the fishermen in a way such that they are now the first ones who are against any type of unsustainable practices, uh, more uh, baskets than uh, uh, needed. Um, they are the ones suggesting new ideas for management. So this is a change of mentality, this change of mindset is very important also. So this change of mentality uh, of fishermen, we've seen that in other uh, uh, places it is necessary there are challenges so we have I'm sure you have challenges in Yucatan so we'd like to tell you I would like you to tell us a little bit about these challenges but maybe dig a little bit deeper to connect these challenges with the commitment as in, that you as a fishery can have and also the help that you might need from companies such as Brasma or any other or NGOs such as FSP uh, or SFP or the MSC 
So can you try and bring all of this together? Challenges with the commitment that you can bring to the table and the help that you might need to make progress. I can summarize this. The third uh, issue regarding the pre-assessment of prevalence is the part regarding the stock. This is a healthy stock. This is a, a stock that stays healthy with the two species that are fished in Mexico. The stock, in spite of the years and the fishery and the catches throughout this time, it stays constant over the years. And it's a um, wonderful fisheries. It's uh, a small boat that moves uh, with the uh, tide or the wind in a way such that the um, octopus tries to find a bait that is the one that is used for fishing. I'm going to share a video with you sometime because it's worth watching. As you have just said, it's about bringing together fishermen and as we can see here today in this fair, the most direct chain where we can actually add value and we can break all the meats uh, bust of the meats that we have in front of us. If what I'm seeing here today in Vigo today, we try to bring us closer to the fishermen, trying to shorten the distance between the uh, primary uh, producer and the final marketer, we're going to be adding value to the fishery, first of all, and also for the people who make this fishery possible. In the same way, this is going to help us, uh, all of us involved in this uh, process, to um, call the attention of the uh, authorities so that the um, challenges that we have in front of us in terms of production, follow-up and the surveillance of our sector, so that all of this help us to have better results and a better development of fisheries. From my point of view, fisheries in general is a business where it's not about fishing more and producing more, it's about selling better. And I think that uh, fisheries, in particular uh, Mexican octopus, um, uh, can be a special example in this regard. If we try to uh, try, try to f get uh, long-term results, this is going to be beneficial for many families, from the consumer to the fisherman, and the other way around. Graciete. We have talked about the involvement of the company. So, how can companies get involved with? the fisheries. I am sure that there are difficulties also for you um, connected to a fishery. So how do you think Brasma can actually contribute for these uh, fisheries to improve their sustainability? The role of companies is to inform the chain of the needs of octopus. Uh, we have information regarding the market, we have data regarding the market, we have chains that need product. They are demanding product. So as Mauricio said, to bring uh, the fisheries together uh, closer to the consumers, it's very important for everybody because the consumers have to uh, understand that uh, the MSC product is better, is sustainable, and they can eat uh, octopus for years. And there's a lack of information of the consumers regarding this because uh, consumers do not know the octopus production channel well. So more and more every day in a very across the board way, uh, consumers want uh, information regarding how a product has been fished and processed and marketed. So these are the last uh, link of the chain. Our work is a little bit more complicated because we have to inform. But if the chain is actually organized in a more compact way and this information can actually move throughout and, the, and flow throughout the uh, chain, that things would be better. So we need to be more informed just to attach value to these information to a greater extent. Uh, so this is something that, uh, um, um, can you hear me? Okay, 
uh, that challenge that uh, Graciete has just brought to the table about being more organized, about making information flow better from uh, the fisheries throughout the um, chain. I think that uh, fisheries have a lot to say regarding this, but also those of us who work together with uh, fisheries such as the MSC, uh, also the SFP. Um, uh, I think that there are some questions on the chat, so maybe Alberto Garazo uh, can uh, just um, tell us about these questions. Um, we have three specific questions, and one of them is very specific. Um, let me try and read it verbatim. In the Caribbean, in Yucatan and Campeche, there is a, an important octopus fishery focused on octopus vulgaris and octopus maya. We know that these are two different species, octopus insularis and octopus americanus. How does this affect the management of the resource? Is the multi-species uh, nature of this fishery is taken into account? Okay, this question, which is a very specific question, I think that Ruben, who is still with us in the audience, I don't know if you've heard the question, uh, Ruben, but maybe you could join us here at the panel and answer this question if you want. Have, did you get the question? Yes? <laughs> Where's the camera? Yes, uh, of those two species in Mexico, the catch of Maya is the most important one. Of the other two species, only the Americanus is relevant. That's important. And the fact of two species existing in the second stock of octopus is not relevant because it's mainly Americanus, the one uh, caught as the second species in Yucatan. Perfect. Okay, Ruben, Alberto, uh, could you continue with the questions? The second one, and I think it is addressed to anybody in the room. It doesn't have to be any of us uh, who know about this, but they ask if there is any specific initiative of fishing girls to get MSC in Galicia. <laughs> well, that's a very good question. I'm going to answer. Uh, Galicia is one of the main powers producing octopus, and I know there is a lot of interest in the evolution and improvement of its sustainability in order to warranty jobs in the future and to minimize the environmental in impacts. We are talking to the Junta and different fishing guilds. Uh, we try all these uh, pre-certification uh, processes are uh, private and they are progressing. So uh, when this is uh, when it's possible, we will inform further. There is a lot of interest, and we are convinced that uh, the administration and the official guides want to uh, commit to the sustainability. Uh, so we will see how it evolves. Thank you. And the final question in the chat is for Francisco. And they would like, they would like you to explain the system, because this price system that fishermen are, uh, are having, because this, the first sales price of octopus in Asturias is, is set before the auction, I mean the fixed price, is there a fixed price since the MSC certification was uh, gotten or, or not? There are previous agreements made by the Union of uh, Fishermen Guides, and it uh, permitted the union of them, because before they were competing with each other, and um, now there is a unique organization. That's why they get better prices. They negotiate with chains, etc. Do we have any other question in the chat? Maybe among the audience uh, somebody here would like to ask any question or if not because we don't have a lot of time we're going to finish I would like to uh, say something else uh, concerning what Francisco just said we've seen that in Asturias 
there is a clear example when uh, fishermen guys come together and things are done right, people live uh, better, fishermen have to be uh, few, uh, just a fewer hours on the sea, and there is a scientific uh, report from the University of Cantabria that talks about a price difference uh, for commercialized products. But we don't think this is the main part. The most important part is that people live better, they commercialize better, and the product is warranted throughout the time. So this is a message that I think needs the support of everybody, the support of the company, like Brasbar or, or others that are involved. Uh, it also needs the leadership of, of uh, fisheries, like uh, the case of Mauricio, and the uh, help of, pe of people who are supporting sustainability. We also need the, the support of NGOs because uh, this may help to solve problems and get uh, financial aid when necessary. We need the presence of NGOs like uh, the one Carmen is representing and the decisive support of the administration. Without the administration that uh, is able to mobilize the science and funds, the sustainability levels would not be achieved. So I just wanted to say that we need to work together. Thank you very much for all of you who are here today.